Okay, for this example, we're going to go through and solve a differential equation that has a forcing function that has a delta function. And the idea here is to see how this, first of all, solves the differential equation. And on top of that, we're going to go through and try to see if we could translate this back into the spring mass equation from earlier this semester. So the first step of this process, of course, is to take the Laplace transform. And when we do that, we're going to get S squared big Y of S minus s times little y of zero minus y prime of zero and again that's from the y double prime plus two times the laplace transform of y prime which is s big y of s minus little y of zero plus 2 times the Laplace transform of y, which is big Y of s, and now equal to the Laplace transform of the delta function, which is just e to the negative pi times s. Now, because we have the zero initial conditions, we can just replace those terms with zero. And when we do that, we end up with the following. We've got s squared big Y of s, plus 2s big y of s plus 2 big y of s is equal to e to the negative pi times s. And if we now factor this, s squared plus 2s plus 2 times big y of s is equal to e to the negative pi s. Dividing through gives us big y of s is equal to 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 2 times e to the negative pi s. And for our s squared plus 2s plus 2, we can complete the square as s squared plus 2s plus 1 minus 1 plus 2. And this consolidates into s plus 1 squared plus 1. So our big Y of s is equal to 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 times e to the negative pi s. And when we go and take the inverse of this, we will have three parts going on. We're going to have, first of all, a sine function from the 1 over s squared plus 1. We're going to have an exponential because of the s plus 1 and the shifting. And then we're going to have a heavy side because of the e to the negative pi s. So our little y of t is going to be equal to an e to the negative t minus pi times the sine of t minus pi times the heavy side at t minus pi. Again, the s plus 1 creates the e to the negative t. The 1 over s squared plus 1 creates the sine, and the e to the negative pi s creates the heavy side. And again, they must always be shifted by that same amount. As a piecewise defined function, this is 0 if the t is less than pi or equal to e to the negative t minus pi sine of t minus pi when t is greater than or equal to pi. So if we now think about the spring mass equation from earlier this semester, this answer makes a lot of sense because we have the original initial conditions, y of 0 equaling 0 and y prime of 0 equaling 0, saying that the spring is at rest. So because the spring is at rest, it has a zero displacement in the process. Then at t equals pi, a very powerful force modeled by the delta function over a very short amount of time is going to strike the spring mass and set it into an oscillation. However, because the spring mass is dampened with the coefficient of two in the middle term, we say it's a damped oscillation. So the exponential pulls it back closer and closer to zero. So we get a damped oscillation starting at pi that eventually decays down to zero over time. And again, this makes sense if you think about the spring mass equation and how we model it this semester.